Three wins on the bounce for Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag. That's how you respond to those first two games against Brighton and Brentford. But arguably, I would say Manchester United's biggest test is coming up on Sunday. You could say that was Liverpool. It was a kind of out of sorts Liverpool. This is a flying Arsenal. Five wins out of five. They look like a different team this season under Arteta. And Manchester United, we've started to look different, but we've got to put in that performance and follow it up against Arsenal on Sunday. In this video, I'm going to run through my starting 11. I think the big questions that Eric Ten Hag has, is Anthony going to be making his debut? Will Casemiro come into the starting 11? Do you keep that same back five? Uh, what about Marcus Rashford? He's looked pretty poor recently. There's lots of, what about Ronaldo? Does he start this game? There's lots of questions. I'm going to answer all of them in this video. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. If you're not already, become part of the community. Hit that subscribe button there. Hit the notification bell as well. You get a little ding every time I go live with a video. And let's run through it. Now, first and foremost, let's start first and foremost. Firstly, let's just start with Eric Ten Hag's updates on the latest team news for that Arsenal game. And one player who will not be playing is Anthony Martial. Eric Ten Hag here has confirmed that Martial will not be involved in the game against Arsenal on Sunday. And that is a blow because Rashford's well, he's formed a man. He's bang out of form. He's playing average at the moment. Might have got the assist against Sancho, but he was poor overall. Martial was the guy in preseason, and then injuries come in, and it's well. I've been here before. I know this story. This is why I can't get too excited about our, my Anthony Martial in the preseason. It's a real shame. In terms of Anthony, the other one, the Brazilian one, he said, "Look, Anthony has trained with Manchester United for the first time on Thursday. He did his first training session, so an individual one. Then we've got Friday coming up." got a team session and then on Saturday is another team session so Anthony is in contention I'll run through my starting 11 now though this was the team that faced Leicester uh, it was another game where Manchester United I'll be completely honest first half was brilliant really like on one of the most controlled performances I've seen from United in a long long time but in that second half the control disappeared uh, Manchester United simply put did not have anywhere near enough inside that midfield and we didn't have control of the ball that needs to change against Arsenal. If we play like we did against Leicester, against Arsenal, I imagine we'll get punished for it. But one thing I do not think we will see changed is that back five. It's unfortunate that Tyrell Malassi is not in this photo, but it's just a cracking photo of De Gea with Martinez, Delo, and Varane. And I honestly think you could have argued all three of them were man of the match against Leicester. I don't think there's any chance or any reason, logically, why any of that back five changes. Our back five has chopped and changed so much over the last few years. It's painful. No settled centre-back partnership. Full backs in and out. Ten Hag had the balls to drop Maguire and Shaw. Probably sooner than many thought that he would, but he did. And it's paid off massively. I imagine if or when Maguire, no, not if or when, it'll be when, Maguire and Shaw get their opportunities, whether that's Europa League against uh, Sociedad on Thursday. Don't know what it is. I'm, their games have to, their standard has to massively rise from last season because of the new minimums that these five are setting. And honestly, man, it's putting a massive smile on my face seeing this. And I, I just want to bring this photo up at any possible opportunity. Anybody, anytime mentions his height anymore, I'm just going to send them this. It's such a good photo. And I'm going to absolutely, once again, like I did this morning, zoom in on that. Jamie Vardy's like, what is this dude doing? Look how far you've got to scroll down to see Jamie Vardy's face. <laughs> yeah, he's five foot nine though. Listen to Jamie Carragher. He's got no chance of being a Premier League defender. Absolutely no chance. That back five is settled and sorted. It'll be, I personally think, the biggest test. You've got Saka, you've got Jesus, you've got Martinelli, you've got Odegaard, all these players are bang in form. Uh, and they're playing well, Arsenal are playing well. And they will create more opportunities, I think, than most teams. Liverpool, we, we even managed to control Liverpool up until that scrappy goal they scored towards the end with Salah. But that back five there, I've got so much confidence in this defence. And it's been a long, long time since I've been able to say that. I'm still a bit uh, squeaky bum time for the last 20 minutes of a game. But I hope that improves. As somebody who I think actually played very well against Leicester was Scott McTominay. We did not sign Casemiro to be the backup for Scott McTominay in any way, shape or form. And this is a case of when and not if Casemiro comes into this starting eleven. And in my opinion, that when is now. I want to see Casemiro in that starting eleven. He's come off the bench a couple of times. 
Fitness isn't an issue for him. It's just about settling into the rhythm of the Premier League, the rhythm of playing for Manchester United. Get him in that starting 11 against Arsenal. C word, control. I want that control from the first minute to the last minute. And Casemiro, like, he just like, you could tell he played for Real Madrid for years. He was just like, give me the ball. I know what to do. No, it just, he uses class. He uses responsibility. Like, let me take it. Give me the ball. I want Casemiro in that team, man. As I say, I think McTominay can be pretty proud of his performances in the last couple of games. In defensively, offensively, he left a lot to be desired against Southampton. But I think overall against Leicester, I thought McTominay played well. But I want Casemiro in that team to face Arsenal. No questions asked. He has to be in there. And I think his midfield partner, I think this is an interesting one because I tell you what, how good has Christian Eriksen been? Thank, uh, phenomenal performances. I mean, that's a bit far, actually. Not phenomenal performances, but his work rate quite literally been better than anybody else in Manchester United's team. He's averaged more distance cover per 90 than any other Manchester United player in the Premier League this season. And I'll be honest, I'm a little bit concerned. I think, I think Ericsson, towards the end of Southampton and Leicester, understandably, as you've seen, he's covered more ground than anybody else, looking a little bit knackered. And I don't really feel that he can last the full 90 against Arsenal. I don't think that we be, we'll change both of those midfielders. I think if we're going to bring Casemiro in, I think Eriksen will start. But I imagine around about the 60th minute mark, I think that would be a smart substitution to make. Kind of regardless of what's going on in the game. I don't think Eriksen will be able to last the 90. Or maybe he will last the 90 and he just get fully rested against Sociedad. Maybe that's what would happen. And it's a possibility as well. But I've been so impressed with Christian Eriksen. I don't think anybody expected him to be as, uh, so, as much of a central figure as he is. But he is. I just don't think he should play the full 90. Well, let's have a look though. Somebody who we don't know whether he's going to play the full 90 is Anthony. Eric Ten Hag's confirmed he's already had his first training session. But my word, do we need him in this team ASAP Rocky, man. We're looking at this front three, right? We're looking at the, the part of our team that's been the best in recent weeks. It's our defence. Two clean sheets. We're looking confident. Our midfield is progressively improving. Yeah, but it's still not quite there yet. We haven't got that control. Bruno himself, I think, is looking far, far better. But, ba but this front three, man, there's been a severe... Uh, you can probably include Bruno in that if you want. There's been a severe lack of creativity. That's exactly why we've gone out and we've spent £85 million pounds on a pure out-and-out -out creative attacking force. Now, it depends whether you think he's going to go in the starting eleven. I want to see this, right? I want to see that straight away. That's the front three that I would like to see. And I'll speak about Rashford. I'll speak about Ronaldo. And of course, I'll speak about Sancho. But given how Eric Ten Hag has eased Casemiro in, my prediction would be that we'll actually see the same thing. That we'll actually see Sancho and Ilanga. And that we'll probably see Anthony come off the bench for the last half an hour or so. Just simply by how, and judging that by uh, on how Casemiro has been eased into the team. A couple of substitute appearances, and I think he should start against Arsenal. Maybe we'll see the same thing with Anthony. Maybe not. Maybe he'll come straight in. I'd love him to come straight in because this front three is not creating enough. Uh, Elanga on that right-hand side. Um, Elanga's just, uh, he's not a technically proficient player. He's got the work rate. He's got the pace to get in behind. Yes, but for those moments where you need someone to slice a pass through, to cut a defence open. Langer's not that, not that guy. And Sancho, he got the goal. But I think Sancho needs to f up his levels a little bit as well towards preseason. And speaking of players that have to up their levels, we can't not talk, I don't think, about Marcus Rashford. Got the assists for Manchester United's goal against Leicester. But his first touch was just so wasteful. As the number nine, you, as an isolated number nine in this formation, you need to have... your. your got to be more clinical because you're going to be working on your own. You're going to be isolated a lot of the time. You have to be better. You have to be better. But Martial down there, you can't quite see him. Let me just pull him across there. He's out injured, right? And then we have a conversation about Ronaldo. And I think you're effectively looking at that. You're effectively looking at a, a choice between Ronaldo or Rashford. And I think what we've seen so far from Eric Ten Hag is that he would rather forego on the quality of the player, Ronaldo, the work rate of a player. 
Rashford. And I imagine that's exactly why Rashford will probably keep his place against Arsenal. Remember, Rashford did score against Liverpool as well. He hasn't been absolutely abysmal all season, but he was very, very poor in that game against Leicester. So I actually think you're going to see 10 out of the 11 start with Casemiro coming in for McTominay. That would be my predicted 11. What I would say is the strongest 11. I would imagine then you're going to be seeing Fred coming on for Ericsson at some point, Anthony coming on for Ilanga at some point, and Ronaldo coming on for Rashford at some point. That's my guess, but it is a guess. He, a te Ten Hag surprised me by making no changes against Leicester. Who do you think should be in this team? Do you think we'll see Anthony start? Do you think we'll see Casemiro start? You can let me know what you think in the comments below, but this is a... This is going to be a cracking game on Sunday. Old Trafford's going to be bouncing. If you're going, enjoy yourself. Make sure you get to the protest at 3 p.m. at the Trinity statue before the game. Uh, if we can make it four wins out of four. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, please. And I want to see Anthony start and Casemiro start. Come on, Tenor. Please.